Any good game has to have some good boss fights in them. Some games are known for their amazing boss fights like God of War or Dark Souls, and Skyrim's host many bosses, and I mean many. And today I want to take a look back at all the many bosses this series has to offer. Now there are a couple of rules for an enemy to be considered a boss, so it can be in this video about boss fights. Any enemy that has a health bar, at least in my mind, is instantly considered a boss fight. And most of the boss fights in this series do have health bars, but there are also some enemies like the Chomp Mage and Giants and the Gulper which don't have health bars, but they also are very clearly boss fights. However, any arena fights like Brock or Jawbreaker, I'm not going to be talking about in this video. This video is already going to be long, and I think they're just aren't too many arena boss fights, so in my mind, it's not gonna make a huge difference. Also, just trying to trim some of the bosses in Trap Team, these have to be bosses that occur naturally in the game. Basically bosses that are not skippable and you have to go through to finish the level. So if you have to go through a secret area to encounter the boss, I will not be talking about it. In my mind, boss fights should be important, so if they weren't important enough to be in the main game, then we're not gonna talk about them. There are some fights that are kind of in a gray area, like the Oculus fight in SSA, and those are we're really just gonna have to come down to my discretion but now let's go game by game and take a look at the many boss fights this series has had so you might be wondering what is the first boss fight ever encountered in the series well it's the evil water chaos minions in the leviathan lagoon we have to fight evil zap gilgrunt and slam bam or as their official names are evil dragon evil amphibious gilman and evil ice yeti you fight all evil minions one by one then you fight them all at once at the end of the boss fight like all first boss fights this is incredibly easy probably one of the harder things about this fight is the sharks you have to dodge in between each fight if i'm being honest however at least to me this doesn't feel like a boss fight having to fight minions just doesn't bring the energy of an actual boss fight plus usually you have a boss fight not a boss's fight either way though it's the first First official boss fight in the entire series so congrats to the evil water chaos minions for doing it before anybody else the second ever boss battle is found two levels later in stone town now this is what i call a boss fight right here none of that fighting three enemies your size and fighting them again nope you're actually fighting one huge stone monster this time around. This fight is cooler than the last one, and this one has build up to it as well. You first see him destroying the town, and then we make our way to him. When we get to him, he starts stomping around the ground and picks up a rock, and there we go, a beautiful health bar. The way this boss fight works is that he throws a boulder at you, but you can see the path it's going to take, so you have to avoid the boulder, and you can deal damage to him during this. However, I didn't know you could do any damage to him during this phase for years, so I never did. Then he starts making rocks rain from the sky, and you must dodge these too. The other stage of the boss fight is where he angrily throws boulders around, and you have to avoid them, and they will hit him, and it stuns him. And then you can attack him when he's knocked out as well. Fun fact about the stone golem is he is one of only two bosses in the main game of Skyrim Spires Adventure that is completely unrelated to chaos. This is probably my favorite boss fight in SSA, however, admittedly, it probably is the easiest in the game too. We get the next elemental minion boss fight in Falling Forest. This time, it's the life element we are facing. We have to fight evil stealth elf, evil stump smash, and evil zoo. This is pretty much the same thing as the last elemental fight except with different sconders. It's also harder as you can imagine, especially stealth elf. The spell we have to deal with this time in between fights is not sharks. However, we do have these green bubbles. The green bubbles have red endings to them and if you destroy those red endings, the entire chain of green bubbles gets destroyed. This is a better boss fight than the water minions, but still kind of underwhelming. Remember I said the stone golem is one of only two bosses in SSA that has nothing to do with chaos? Well, the second one is found in Battlefield, and it is the troll tank. I can hardly call this a boss fight, but the health bar is present, so it is a boss fight. There are two ways to defeat the troll tank. One way is throwing bombs found around the level at him, or hitting its weak spot on the back of the tank. The best thing I can say about this fight is that it's in a cool place. A rainy, muddy battlefield is a neat place for a boss fight. This boss fight might might be actually easier than the stone golem. We next get the undead version of Chaos Evil Minions. The three evil Skyrunners you fight are Hex, Chop Chop, and Ghost Roaster, and there is a very clear difficulty spike with this battle. Before this fight, you can get through all these boss fights very easily and probably not even lose a Skyrunner. However, this one is actually very challenging, and I can respect that. All are difficult to deal with, especially when you have to fight all three undead minions at once. It is very hard. The spell between the fights is also more challenging. You have to dodge lasers, and the lasers can also move. This is probably one of the best fights so far, and definitely the toughest one we've had to deal with. In Lava Lakes Railway, we fight yet another elemental minion boss. How surprising. 
we must fight Evil Eruptor, Sunburn, and Flameslinger. And somehow this one's actually much easier than the previous elemental fight. I don't know if it's just because the Skyners you fight or just because they didn't make it this hard, but it's very apparent that it is not as hard of a fight. The spell in between the fights is way more avoidable as well. You just have to dodge some fireballs. One of the biggest letdowns for Skyner Spire's adventure is the final boss fight. Once you finally make it out of Chaos's lair and get to him, you don't even fight Chaos. Instead, what you have to do is fight all the elemental minions and spells at once. Chaos reveals his four element Hydra, the thing that turned Eon into a floating head, and it shoots all of the elemental spells at you at once. You fight minions one by one, at first then Chaos starts sending three minions at a time at you with all different elements. In between that, Chaos will try to destroy you with his floating chair and once he's stuck in the ground, after is when you can attack him. So the very first Chaos boss fight in the entire series, you don't even get to fight Chaos himself really. He has no attacks where he actually gets out of his chair and fights you. But hold up, if you thought we were done, think again, as Skyrim's Spars Adventure comes with four adventure packs and two of them have boss fights, so let's take a look at them. The first one is probably the worst and strangest boss fight in the entire series. This time, the enemy is a big wall. That's right, a giant wall. The only reason this is even in the video is because it has a health bar. You have to hit the wall with giant flame balls to defeat it. This one is easy, no surprise, and it really can't fight back on the account of it being a wall. Then we have technically the final boss in the game, Oculus, the giant eye. Now even though he doesn't have a health bar, I think this one is very clearly a boss fight, so I am counting it. And it's also probably one of the better boss fights since you have to do a lot to defeat him. You have to hop in between the undead and alive realm in the level to shoot him with cannons. In some realms, the cannons cannot be shot, so you have to hop in between them until you can shoot them at him. Also, while dodging lasers coming out of Oculus's eye. It is a pretty good boss fight in my opinion since it's a pretty active fight. Even with the last boss battle going off with a bang, one of Skyner Spyro's downfalls is the lack of interesting, creative, and new bosses. Five of the nine boss battles in the game are basically the same thing, being the elemental minions. So more than half of the fights you get in this game are very underwhelming. So hopefully Skyner's Giants can have better and more interesting fights. Giant starts off on a cold streak as the first six levels in the game do not feature a boss fight of any sort. But oh boy was the way worth it because the first battle in the game is Chompy Mage, one of the most recognizable villains in the series. This right here is what I call a boss battle. It is the first one of its game so it's not the most difficult fight in the world but this is what the series has needed, a cool unique and fun boss battle. We have to battle the Chompy Mage in two different forms. One is the giant Chompy form and the other one is a sorcerer form. In his giant Chompy form he stomps all over the place and spawns Chompies everywhere that you have to defeat. For the next form he puts heal and damage circles all around the area. This level also features realm hopping like Dark Light Crypt, so depending on what realm you're in, the circles could heal you or cause damage to you, so you have to swap realms a lot. This is so refreshing to play after all the mediocre slush that SSA gave us, so I'm hoping the Giants keeps it up with their boss fights. And oh boy they did, as four levels later we get to fight the rapping robot Drill X. One of the more underappreciated things I think about this boss is probably how big of a surprise it is when you first played the game. You might not remember it since it was probably so long ago, but when you first get to the mission you think you have to destroy a giant drill. But then you get to the final part, and a giant robot appears, and if that wasn't enough, it starts singing. I want whatever Toys R Bob was having when they thought of this idea, because whoa man, this, this is a creative boss fight, and an amazing boss battle idea. You fight Drill X in three rounds. The first round he uses his drill and drills one part of the fighting area, and you have to dodge the rubble that comes out of the drill, and also deal damage to his drill. And there's also lasers that come out of the sky that you also have to look out for. Once you do enough damage, he sings and he goes into round 2, where he revs up the drill and drags it across the arena, and you have to use bounce pads to jump over the drill. Once he gets his drill stuck on the other side, you have to attack his drill again and avoid the lasers also. His final stage, his drill doesn't work anymore, so he just slams the three part of his drill on the ground, and you have to steer clear of the explosions that this causes and deal more damage to the drill. After this round, you finally defeat him, and he lets out one more bar as the system shut down. What an amazing fight, probably one of if not the best boss fights in the series. I mean, can you say any other game has a rapping robot for a boss battle? I think not. Even though Giants has only two boss fights in 11 chapters, the quality of the fights are so much better that I think Giants already has had better boss fights in SSA. Spars Adventure just spewed out a bunch of mid fights 
that were not really enjoyable, while Giants might not have as many, but they are amazing. So let's see what we have left. Actually, we only have one left, Chaos, and this time around you actually get to fight him. Well, kind of. Chaos finds the Iron Fist of Arcus, which turns him into a giant robot. So for the final battle of Giants, we get to fight Robo Chaos. We first find Robo Chaos while we are crossing a bridge, and he jumps up and destroys part of our bridge, so we have to run to the back of the bridge before he destroys the rest of it. Once we finally get back to where we started, our best robot ghost friend comes back along with Ermit the Hermit and a giant mech suit to help us. Robo Chaos has a couple weaknesses. One of them is the giant red button on his fist, and the other one is his head. So while Robo Chaos and our mech fight, we have to damage the red button. But Chaos also released minions to slow us down. Oh, remember those heal and damage circles that Chompy Mage had in his fight? Well, they're back. And Chaos releases a totem that spawns them, except this time we can't hop to change them, so we just have to dodge the damaged ones. And if all that wasn't enough, Chaos can now also beam lasers from his eyes. Finally, after a while, our mech starts doing some damage to Robo Chaos, and he pins him down, and we can damage his head too, instead of only being able to damage the red button. Eventually, after dealing more damage to his head and his fist, Robo Chaos is finally defeated and he turns back into regular Chaos. Between the two Chaos fights, this is definitely better. I mean, we get to watch two giant robots fight while we're in the middle of a boss fight. Skander's Giants not only surpassed the bosses in SSA with six less bosses, it blew SSA out of the water. I mean, it's not even close. And I think that perfectly describes the dynamic between SSA and Giants. Even though Giants has less content than Spire's Adventure, it just has more quality inside of the game. All three of these bosses, Trompy Mage, Relix, and Rebel Chaos, are all amazing fights in the series. I would take three great bosses than nine mediocre bosses all day. Now it's time to find out if Swap Force can keep the same quality of battles that Giants did. Swap Force does something a bit different from the other games. Some of their bosses have designated levels for them. The first boss we fate, Evil Glumshanks, takes place in its own arena that counts as a level called Jungle Rumble. Basically, instead of the bosses being at the end of a level, you end the main level and go to a side level that features a boss, and all you do in that level is fight a boss. Now, this isn't the case for every single boss, but for a good majority, it is. Anyway, back to Evil Glumshanks. In this game, Chaos finds out how to evilize good-natured creatures, and he ends up evilizing Glumshanks. And Evil Glumshanks makes a giant Archean armored automobile out of dead Archean parts and fights us in an arena filled with spikes. We have to dodge Evil Glumshanks' vehicle when he tries to attack us and make him hit the spikes on the wall. Once he hit the spikes, we can attack him. This is pretty much what you do for the whole fight, except there starts to become less and less spikes and you have to line up where he tries to hit you. I like this boss fight, it's nothing crazy, but for the first one of the game, it's a nice start. The level Montleyville brings us something new. You actually get two boss fights in one level. The first boss fight is Evilize Whisker. In the fight, Whiskers just jumps and creates shock waves and you have to jump over them. However, this is kind of a weird boss fight because you don't defeat Evil Whiskers. You only damage him about two thirds of his health and he leaves. And you don't see him again until the end of the level where you finish off the fight and de Evilize Whiskers. And almost right after that battle, you have to fight the actual bad guy of the level, Baron Von Shellshock. The Baron hops inside of a mech that has shields around it so we can't damage him and he starts shooting bombs and enemies out of the robot. But eventually he will shoot out a dynamite and we can use that to get rid of his shields for a short period of time so we can deal damage to him. Eventually you defeat him, but both these boss fights don't have phases to them and don't ever change up. They're both okay boss fights, just not the best the series have ever seen. The next designated boss fight level is where we find the next fight. The Fire Viper. In the area we are in, the Fire Viper is in the middle, and there are some cannons on each of his sides that shoot out giant plungers at him. Once you shoot both of them at him, he goes down for a second, and we use his chance to destroy the evilized crystals on him. Once we do this enough, all evilized crystals on the top of his head get destroyed, so he eats you. Inside of his belly, there are three fire gear golems and one more crystal. After getting rid of the gear golems, you destroy the final crystal, and the boss battle's over. This actually is probably my favorite fight in Swap Force so far. If you couldn't find out by now, I really like boss fights that have different stages within the fight and even different settings, and this fight right here checks off all those boxes. Now, probably the most popular non-related chaos boss fight in Swap Force is Mesmeralda. Mesmeralda is definitely an interesting boss. The fight area is set up like a little theater, and I mean she uses puppets. I think they try to recreate the magic that Drill X brought to the game, because we get a cutscene before the fight of her singing about basically how she's going to beat us in a fight. However, she doesn't actually sing in the middle of the fight like Drill X. Honestly, I don't really dig this song before the fight, it goes on longer than it should, but 
How about we get to the actual fight? Her first couple of attacks are her sending out her puppets to get you as she hides behind her curtains. After a while, a light pops up and that will make her get out from behind the curtains and you can fight her. The same process happens three more times before she finally adds something new to the fight. A giant spinning blade now appears with her puppets too. Then after you attack her again, a second one appears. After once again attacking her, the second blade goes away and now she drops bombs on the arena. For the last stage of the fight, all the blades come back as well as the bombs. From what I've heard, this is a pretty popular boss fight, but to me it's always been kind of repetitive, thus making it a bit boring. It's not a horrible boss fight by any means, and way better than the monstrosities in SSA, and so far actually probably the best boss fight from this game just because it's challenging, but this in my opinion still doesn't reach the heights of Skyner's Giants. I feel like no one talks about how weird it is that there's a chaos boss fight in Phantasm Forest. Probably because it is so forgettable. Anyway, if you remember, Swap Force tries to pump fake you and make you think that Chaos isn't the big bad of Skyner's Swap Force and that it's actually his mom. I really hate this boss fight because it's a turret section boss fight, literally the worst thing in all of gaming turret sections and they make you fight chaos in it. Let's move on because this might be the worst fight in the entire series. The second to last Swap Force level is always said to have two boss fights, Bubba Greaves and Chaos's mom. But here's the thing, it actually only has one. I have at least never counted Chaos's mom as a boss fight. For people that have never fought in the quote unquote boss fight here, you don't actually ever fight her. I mean she doesn't even have a health bar. The most you do to her is shoot her with two or three crystals sometimes, and then take your Skander out the portal because she's hiding in your portal. And the main part of her so-called boss battle is before Bubba Greaves. So for all of those reasons, Chaos's mom is disqualified and I'll not be talking about her in this video as a boss. But somehow the way less talked about and probably one of the more forgettable bosses in the entire series does check all those boxes for a boss fight. So how is the Bubba Greaves boss battle? Well it's okay, Bubba Greaves stands above you and throws minions down at you, and then eventually bombs. Eventually one of those bombs Bubba Greaves throws down is actually dynamite and you can throw it at Greaves and Greaves falls down so you can damage him. So this is basically just a copy and paste of Shellshock. Nice. To finish off the bosses of the main story of Swap Force, we have the strangest Chaos boss fight. In my every Skander level ranked, I summed up this boss fight by saying Chaos gets high off the darkness and I think I kinda nailed it with that description. Basically, Chaos just jumps into petrified darkness inside of the Cloud Break Volcano and turns into a giant purple monster. Throughout the boss fight, you have to hit various parts of his body like his toenail. Thank you, Vicarious Visions, for making Chaos's toes a focal point of the boss battle. Heck, you even get to go inside Chaos's mouth as well, and you even get to go inside of Chaos's brain before he sneezes you out. The boss fight ends with you shooting your Skander into Chaos's weird forehead thing. You know what? This is a good boss battle. For all its many weird things this boss fight chooses to do, it does one thing correct. It makes the boss fight entertaining, which is all you can really ask for, so thank you, Super High Chaos, for this fight. However, Swap Force isn't done just yet, because unlike Giants, Swap Force does feature two more DLC levels that both feature boss fights, and the first level is Tower of Time, which features the chicken Cluck who has found a way to manipulate time and keep Skyons in an infinite time loop and we must stop him. Now, I absolutely love Cluck, I think he's hilarious, but this boss fight is not it. Basically the entire fight he jumps and creates shockwaves and you gotta jump over it and stop time so you can get more hits on him. He spawns other enemies as well and shoots beams of light at you occasionally. It also sucks that this boss battle is confined to a very, very small space. I love boss battles with big backgrounds and being able to move around a lot and this battle is just very claustrophobic. Probably one of the smallest stages for a boss fight in the entire series, so let's move on to the final boss fight of Swap Force. The Sheep Mage is the final boss fight, and boy is it a weird one. First of all, I guess there are multiple crazy mages in Skanders. First Chomper Mage, now Sheep Mage. In the beginning of the battle, the mage turns into a giant sheep and spawns enemies and then tries to suck you in to the enemies with his breath. You can find bombs sometimes in the arena as well and throw them at the giant sheep, which brings him back to his mage form and you can damage him. And that's the entire fight. Whenever you turn the Sheep Mage back into his original form, there are different obstacles in the way to get him, but other than that, the battle is the same throughout the entire battle. Swap Force definitely did have some good boss fights and brought us the most in the series so far with 11. I still think on a per boss basis, Skyrim's Giants has the best boss in the game, but in Swap Force you are getting good bosses in this game at a more consistent rate than Giants. However, I think that the next game is going to have more bosses than Swap Force.
Uh, hey, dude. Huh? Yeah, so um, for your next video, you, you're going to be talking about every single boss fight in Skylanders. Oh, yeah. Yeah, every single boss fight. Yeah, it should be a fun video. Well, per your rules of the boss has to have a health bar or has to very clearly be a boss, that means you have to talk about all 46 bosses in Trap Team. Ooh. Okay, look, Trap Team blows every other game out of the water with its 46 boss battles. So we are going to have to marathon through these. Remember, we're only talking about ones that you actually have to fight to finish the level. Any bosses that you can avoid will not be talked about. Okay, before we get to the actual serious villains, we first need to talk about all the non-Doom Raider boss fights. So let's go. Sheep Creep is a sheep with guns and is very easy. Did I say 46 boss fights? Never mind. It's only 45. Gulper doesn't have a boss battle. Slobber Trap is the first actual tough boss battle. Not because of Slobber Trap, because because it has like 100 different enemies that also try to kill you during this fight. Bruiser Cruiser, this is a boss battle that's broken. You can leave the fight in the arena and he can't kill you. Shreddnaught is the beta boss fight that TFB chose to show when they are showing Trap Team. Not a bad fight. Chill Bill, this dude is very cool. See what I did there? Cuckoo Clocker, the first arena boss fight in the game. So that's cool. Bombshell, he is pretty forgettable. Brawlris is okay, I guess, nothing to him. Mastermind is cake, an easy fight. Brawl and Chain has a cool fight since you have to fight him in a ship and it's raining, so that's kind of cool. I-5 is a hard boss fight since you have to fight like 30 other dudes too during the fight. Hoodsickle is a good boss fight. Pinata is a fan favorite by many, but his boss battle sucks. Krankenstein is a funny villain, but he has not such a funny boss fight because for some reason this boss fight owns me and it's really hard to get past it for no reason, at least to me. Rage Mage is the most useless boss fight of all time. Fisticuffs, why is he in the dark element? Scrap Shooter has a cool accent and a decent fight. Threat Pack, for some reason, is a good villain once you trap them. This is another arena boss battle. Tycron Crow, now this is a pretty nice boss fight for a villain that isn't a Doom Raider. Bone Chompy, this is yet another broken boss fight because you can make the Chompy commit suicide and you don't even have to fight him. Grave Clobber, yet another arena boss fight and a good one at that too. Bad Juju exists. That's about it. Smokescreen. Why did they put a boss fight in the chaos boss battle level? It just makes you kind of feel bad for the guy. Trolling Thunder just kind of pops up in the level, but once you trap him, he's decent. Lob Goblin can be crushed by a giant rock instead of just fighting him. Also a pretty random boss fight. And Mab Lobs. He's an evil Mabu. He sucks. Huh. All right. Okay. That was, well, to put it lightly, all the non-important boss fights in Trap Team. So that leaves us with only 9 boss fights left. Remember, Gulper, even though he's a Doom Raider, doesn't have a boss fight. So that leaves us with 9 Doom Raiders left. First up is Chompy Mage, making his second appearance in the video. And just like the first time in the video, this boss fight is also amazing. In this fight, he starts off with spawning a couple of Chompies for us to defeat before turning into his giant Chompy form. But this time he can jump and fire waves appear when he jumps. Then he does something new. He turns into a giant fire Chompy and spawns fire Chompies when he jumps too. This is a hard boss fight. Chompy Mage is harder than other Doom Raiders found later in the game. However, Chompy Mage deserves this since he is one of the best characters in the entire series. One of the best boss fights also in the entire series as well. The next Doom Raider we face is Chef Pepperjack. I love food themes in games, and this boss fight is entirely that. I mean, the fighting arena is a giant grill. Chef Pepperjack first just tries to attack you with whatever mixing machine he has on his hand. You just have to move out of the way to avoid them, but once he hits the wall, he starts throwing chili peppers at you that explode into fireballs for a second. Then Pepperjack brings out the laser show, and you have to dodge the lasers on his grill. Then he goes back throwing peppers at you again before putting the light show on one more time. The next part of the fight is very interesting. Interesting. He puts stakes on the grill and you have to jump on them to avoid his lasers. He starts putting more stakes on the grill and it slowly destroys some of the stakes, so you have to keep moving from stake to stake until you finally defeat him. This is one of the best boss fights when it comes to the theming. Like I said, I love the food theme and this is a very enjoyable boss. It is just kind of weird that Chompy Mage is still way harder than Chef Pepperjack, even though he was fought many levels before this. The first miss when it comes to Doom Raider boss fights is the Dreamcatcher. This feels more like a very dragged on regular boss fight in Trap Team. The fighting area is just a bunch of floating platforms that she can make disappear. During the fight, whenever you step on one of the platforms, you have like 
one second to get off it before it falls. To be able to deal damage to Dreamcatcher, you have to destroy bed she makes, but this is super easy and the boss fight is over extremely quickly. Definitely a disappointing boss fight. On to Dr. Crankcase, the tech Doom Raider. Dr. Crankcase first starts off this fight by trying to attack you with his spinning legs and dropping on you from the sky. Then he uses evil goo to turn regular buckets into evil buckets with legs, somehow, before going back to using those trusty legs of his to try to defeat you. He also starts dropping goo from the sky as well at you. He even makes a giant wood monster to try to destroy you. To try to make the boss fight a bit more difficult, he removes the floor and turns the floor into like this treadmill type of floor that runs straight into a giant wheel full of spikes. A couple more rounds of that and the fight is over. Another pretty great boss fight in this game. This fight stays interesting since it changes throughout the entire time. It isn't really the same throughout the entire fight. Alright, we're getting to the last three Doom Raiders found in the main game, with Wolf Game being the next one. This boss fight has a notable difficulty spike like the Chompy Mage boss battle. This one is very hard to complete without any deaths. In the first phase, Wolf Gang will either slide at you or just try to chop you with his bone guitar. Then he destroys part of the arena and turns the battle from 3D to 2D. You have to once again dodge him sliding and attacking you, but with way less room for error now. After a while of this phase, Wolfgang leaves the arena and then he starts shooting lasers at you that get progressively harder to avoid. Wolfgang will eventually go back into the fight for the final phase and will attack you while you also have to dodge lasers until you finally defeat him. This is an amazing boss fight this game has to offer. It changes up all the time. It really feels like you're in different phases basically the entire time, and it's just a very refreshing boss fight. Now it is time for the leader of the Doom Raiders, the Golden Queen. This fight starts out by the Golden Queen shooting golden rings at you that you have to jump over. Eventually, she starts sending out golden statues that shoot shurikens towards you. Later in the fight, the Golden Queen will start deleting more and more of the arena until you only have 9 blocks left to stand on, before turning into a giant golden ball, and then you have to jump from platform to platform as she destroys the platforms beneath you in her ball form. You get stuck on a 9 block platform once again for the next phase. The Golden Queen puts 4 statues on each corner shooting more shurikens at you. Her gold ball form comes back and you have to calculate your jumps as she destroys all the platforms around you. Then the Golden Queen turns into a giant and she shoots everything she has at you, whether it be golden shurikens or gold rings. In one last ditch ever to destroy the Skanders, the Golden Queen chases you out of the area and down the stairs you took to get to her. She gets stuck underneath a pillar and you have to destroy the pillar and finally defeat her. When I was a kid, I thought this last part of the boss fight was actually really intimidating, but now that I'm older, it just looks really dumb because the Golden Queen model used is kind of stiff and her model also looks kind of poorly rendered but overall trap team again brings us another classic boss fight okay on to probably the most challenging boss fight in the entire series of sconders ultra traptanium powered chaos chaos can make purple rings around the arena then uses elemental bullets to try to defeat you one of the elemental bullets is always one of your sconders and then the other elemental bullet is usually the villain you have on the portal you're supposed to switch from your Skander to the villain, and if you do it correctly, you actually gain health from these little bullets. Hey look, Chaos even brings back Doom Sharks from the very first boss fight ever in the game. Nice callback. When Chaos gets around to half health, he does one of my least favorite things a boss fight can do in a game. He regenerates health. Why do some developers do this, man? Just make his health the amount you want it to be instead of giving him more. This is one of the most demoralizing things in game since now you know all the effort you put in was all in vain. This is why this Chaos boss fight in my opinion can't be the greatest in this series. Now in his new form Chaos has two Traptanium blades and has a new attack where he tries to chop you with them. His old attack also does more damage now and the Doom Sharks are harder to dodge. And oh my goodness he freaking did it again. He regenerated health again. The worst thing that I just said a boss battle can do and Chaos has done it twice. Amazing. Okay, Chaos now has wings for some reason. Chaos's old attacks do even more damage, and now Chaos can use his blades to make lasers on the ground that you have to jump over. Even though Chaos regenerates the least amount of health this time, this is probably actually the longest part of the boss fight since you have to be constantly jumping over obstacles if you want to stay alive, which means you can't get as many hits on Chaos as you would like to. But eventually, you do defeat him, and if you do have that coveted Chaos trap, you can trap him. Okay, this boss battle has a lot to unpack. Not only is it the hardest boss fight in the game, it is probably the most difficult boss fight in the entire series. So this fight... Is as hard as it gets. No boss battle before this or after this is going to be more challenging. With that being said, the two health regens that Chaos has in this fight are really frustrating. Just give him the amount of starting health you want him to have, seriously. 
Even with all that though, this is still a good boss fight. Although it can become a drag near the end of the fight since the whole fight is kind of the same thing throughout the entire sequence. But with the chaos boss fight being over, we still have the light and dark doom raiders to talk about. So let's see what these new elements have to offer when it comes to these battles. First up is Nightshade. This boss fight is freaking terrible, like it's really bad. The worst boss fight in the game, if not the worst in the series. Nightshade appears on pillars and you have to destroy them to get him off the pillars. Once you do that, he spawns a bunch of decoys and runs around them, but it's very easy to find which one's actually him because there's a spotlight on him. Then he just makes more pillars than before, except this time he throws sticks at you. Once you destroy the pillars, the same thing happens. A bunch of decoys appear and you can still find the real one very easily. Then he gets on pillars again, but this time purple fireballs appear at you for some reason. And that's the end of the boss fight. Now you might be wondering, well, SGTV, he still has a bunch of health left. What gives? Nightshade defeated. That gives, apparently. I personally have a theory that they actually plan to add a new phase after this, but they didn't have enough time to work on it, so they just made him kneel down and just get destroyed. This is probably correct since Trap Team had a rush development. I mean, Trap Team going through a rush development has become one of the most widely recognized things about it. Hopefully, the final boss fight of this game is not like this. Okay, Mags, where are you taking us? We've been talking about this Spire thing for a while. <laughs> the one you thought was Mags was none other than me, Luminous. Whoa, Mags is a dude? What? Okay, not really. Luminous is the Light Doom Raider and has been impersonating Mags through this entire level. But here we are, let's do this. Luminous starts out by shooting light beams at us. Okay, it makes sense, light element. Then while shooting light beams at us, he'll also start shooting crystals out of the sky that you must dodge. However, Luminous has shields on, so you have to use the crystals that he drops at you to destroy his shields. He also adds more and more light beams the longer the fight goes on. Eventually, Luminous gets giant statues that bounce light off them, so you have to avoid them. The statues can actually move the lights, so you need to destroy them to make the fight easier. However, Luminous just keeps making more and more statues, but eventually, you do defeat Luminous. And I don't really know if this is a hot take, but in my opinion, this is actually one of the best boss fights in the entire series. The boss fight changes a lot, the set is cool, and the villain is awesome. I know this has nothing to do with the boss fight, but Luminous' theme also slaps. But back to the boss fight. To be honest, I really don't know why, but I mean, I just think this is actually one of the best boss fights in the entire series. It is just so fun to me. Something interesting about both Luminous and Nightshade, though, is that they are the only Doom Raiders that kind of just accept their fate once they realize they're about to be trapped. The other Doom Raiders try to fight it, but freaking Luminous runs right into the Vortex. But there we go, we finally talked about all 34 bosses in Trap Team. There's actually a bit more like I said, but we skipped a few. But if you fight every boss fight, including the ones you don't organically fight in the game, there are 46 bosses in Trap Team. Now that is insane, but still, over 34 bosses we played though. To be honest, a lot of the non-Doom Raider bosses were pretty forgettable. A couple stand out, like Chill Bill and Taekwon Crow and I-5, but most of them are either very easy or very annoying. Still, there are a couple diamonds in the rough. But those Doom Raider boss fights are very good. Now, Dreamcatcher and Nightshade are pretty bad, but the rest are actually all great. I think we have a new keen when it comes to bosses in the Skyrim series. Yes, Giants has been toppled by a trap team. I mean, it should be, right? It'd be very embarrassing if a game with 34 different bosses doesn't have better bosses than Giants because it only has three boss fights. I also do think, though, on a per basis boss fight, trap team is actually still better. It can be argued, though, because there are a lot of filler bosses, but I still think that I'm going to give trap team the edge here. And I also think you're kind of just splitting hairs if we're going to argue since you get a boss fight in every single level on Trap Team. Though to be fair, I've always argued that Trap Team didn't need a boss fight in every single level. Like, did Time Town really need a boss fight? I think not. But still, congratulations to Trap Team. You have the best boss fights in the entire series. But maybe it won't last for long because let's see what Superchargers has to offer. Okay, so superchargers. There are two types of bosses you can actually encounter in superchargers. Ones that are in vehicles and regular ones that you don't fight inside of a vehicle. Unfortunately, however, most of the bosses you will fight in this game are in vehicle sections. Now, remember that rule I said in Trap Team where bosses that you don't encounter organically we're not going to talk about? Well, that rule is broken now because superchargers has considerably less amount of boss fights if you do count the ones you have to go out of your way to fight. I also broke this rule mainly because Superchargers has some very interesting bosses as well in the game 
behind certain land, sea, or sky sections, and I really want to cover them. However, some of them that you have to go out of your way, we're still not going to be talking about. Only the interesting one. So, I am kind of cherry picking which boss fights we're going to talk about, but like, do you really want me to talk about the Cannon Ship of Doom for 30 seconds? I don't think so, so I think it is reasonable that we're going to be leaving some of these out of this video. Alright, the first boss fight we're going to be talking about in this section is in the Cloud Kingdom. And it is actually in a sea vehicle section. I'm talking about the Storm Sequencer. The Storm Sequencer has barriers that move around, so you have to constantly be moving to avoid being damaged. The Sequencer will also shoot lightning beams at you during the fight. And near the end of the fight, the Storm Sequencer puts up shields around it and sends out a couple ships with shields on them too. You have to make the Storm Sequencer shoot lightning beams at the ships by getting close to them and then moving out of the way once the Storm Sequencer chooses where the lightning will strike. After those ships are destroyed, you can defeat the Storm Sequencer. A pretty good boss fight for a water vehicle. I mean, the water vehicles are going to be very hard to make bosses for, but this one was actually pretty entertaining. But right after that, in the same chapter, we get thrusted into a land vehicle section. The villain being Lord Stratosphere, the main villain of this level. I have always said that Lord Stratosphere is the least sinful land vehicle boss. This is mainly because you're not confined to a box. You actually chase Lord Stratosphere down a road, which is way better. You chase Stratosphere and dodge metal spikes on the road while he shoots energy balls at you. You deal damage to him while chasing him and the boss fight is done and over pretty quickly. A nice boss fight for the beginning of the game. The next boss fight is fought in a land vehicle and we fight Count Moneybone in a very weirdly constructed boss fight. There are three different fighting areas in this battle. You start on the one on the ground and there are two walls to your right and to your left. Now you can imagine that driving on walls is very confusing and disorienting and it is. It is such a weird experience man, you feel like you know where you're going when you drive and then you just don't. Money Bone just gets in his vehicle and drives towards you and leaves a trail of fire behind him. To make you go to the different areas of the fight, Money Bone will make a purple shockwave so you have to leave by going through one of the portals in the area. When you get to the different points of view, Count Money Bone's vehicle will shoot at you and that's it. That's the entire boss fight, nothing else happens. This boss fight sucks and something that I've noticed is this boss fight is super difficult on nightmare mode but no other difficulty. On hard mode, the difficulty is super easy and the boss fight is a breeze. But on nightmare mode, you're gonna lose Skanders. Or maybe I'm just really bad, I don't know, but this is one of the worst fights in the game that you will encounter. It, it is a bad boss. So the next chapter in Superchargers has three boss fights, but only one of them is actually notable. The level we are on is Battle Ball Island, and the whole level is just an arena fight. We need to make our way to the top of Battle Ball to fight the Spell Slam, so the guy that we are here for. And we need to fight two other competitors to get to him. The first is Brimstone and Boulder. This fight is okay, but the music is amazing. In the beginning of the fight, Brimstone and Boulder take turns fighting you while the other helps on the sideline. When Boulder's fighting, he makes shock waves that you have to jump over while on the sideline, Brimstone sends out little fireballs. When Brimstone is attacking you, he shoots fire at you out of his built-in guitar on his chest while Boulder makes rocks fall from the sky. At the end of the fight, both Brimstone and Boulder try to defeat you at once. Is the boss fight easy? Yes. It is actually incredibly easy. But the boss fight is fun, so that is a plus. But next is a way less fun boss fight. We have Captain Bristle Stash. All he does is send some minions at you, and then he will eventually join the fight where all he really does is swing his sword at you, which has a large windup, and he is defeated very quickly. But now on to the main event, the Spell Slamser's boss battle. The Spell Slamser can spawn into different spell punks and only goes back into his regular form once you defeat all of them, and he can also shoot energy beams from his face at you. When he realizes though that this isn't working, he sends you to a winter tundra where he fights you there. After we do some more fighting, he will send us back to Battle Royale Island where we finish out the fight and defeat him. I actually really like Spell Slamser. He's a cool boss fight with a very unique attack system. I just think having two boss fights before him makes his fight feel less important. And I also think that this boss fight maybe should have been a bit longer just to kind of drive home how important this is of a boss because he is actually pretty important when it comes to the story. But he is just kind of brushed off here, which I don't like, but it still is a great boss fight. The next chapter, we see the return of Cluck, but this time he does control well the time. He's the owner of a fast food business, but of course it is actually a front of an evil scheme of his. But he isn't the first boss fight in this level. No, we first must go to the sky section of the level to fight Cockadoodle Doom. Yes, Cockadoodle Doom. 
we first do something that doesn't happen at all in the other sky section. We get a front view of our sky vehicle as we see Cockadoodle Doom shoot eggs at us from his mouth, which doesn't even make sense because he's a rooster and they don't lay eggs. After he chases us for a bit, we get put in the giant sky dome, and now Cockadoodle Doom has a gun that shoots eggs at us. Eventually, he also sends out some chicken pilots to defeat us, and even tractor beams. Like, like actual tractor beams. Beams coming from tractors to shield himself, so we must destroy the flying tractors and then defeat him. If I'm being real, I think this is actually one of the more enjoyable boss battles in this game. I mean, it's funny, but at the same time, it's also dynamic enough and interesting of a fight to where it's actually kind of rememberable. However, Cockadoodle Doom isn't the main enemy of this level, because Cluck is, and are you kidding me? Another vehicle boss fight? I am fine with side bosses being in vehicles, but having to fight the main bosses in a car, like what are we doing? I get it, the vehicles are the theme of this game, but when are we going to see a real main boss fight in a regular fight, not in a vehicle? You can argue that, you know, Spell Slamser was a main villain, but also you fought three other bosses in that game as well. Stratosphere was in a vehicle fight, Count Moneybone was in a vehicle fight, now Captain Cluck. And if that wasn't all bad, this boss fight still also sucks because you can't even damage Cluck with your own vehicle. You just have to shoot chickens at him and that's how you damage him. You don't even actually damage him. Some flying chickens do. The next chapter is Monstrous Isles. It has three bosses, much like Battle Brawl Island, but they are way more spread out. The first one we fight is the Terror Shark. The Terror Shark can dig underground and try to jump out at you. But he also can fly, so he goes up in the sky and blasts down at the ground to create shockwaves. His last attack is, well, I guess, throwing up at you. I mean, look at this. What's going on here? The Terror Shark isn't a very complicated boss fight. Next up is the Beachcomber, who is only accessible if you complete the sea vehicle section first in the level. This is yet another simple boss fight. She can also go underground and shoot tentacles up at you. Then she wraps up into a ball and throws some punches at you. Her final attack is going underground once again and turning into a spinning blade that you have to jump over. Just like the Terror Shark, it feels like another filler boss fight that was added just because why not? It feels like it doesn't really need to be here. But now for what we all came for, the real big bad of the level, the Thunder Toe. And he is actually just as mediocre as both the other fights before this. The stage is very small and all he does is throw punches at you. He shoots some energy balls and he also can jump on you. Pretty underwhelming considering the circumstances of the level. I mean, I just asked for a main boss fight that wasn't in a vehicle and again, they drained the boss fight by having two more bosses before it. I mean, this guy holds the missing piece of the core light and he's just a joke. You get him done with really quickly. In the next level, there are actually three bosses again, but I'm only going to talk about the notable one, which is Rekosaurus, because look at him, he looks super cool. Unfortunately, the boss battle is not super cool. All you do is ram him from behind. You come from behind. You hit his back. All you do is use speed boosters, then surprise him when he isn't looking. Okay, you know what, never mind. The fight was supposed to be cool, but you barely do anything in this fight, and it just becomes super forgettable. The next boss fight is literally a reskin of Captain Bristlestash. He looks the same, his moves are the same, but he's purple now and has a different weapon. This boss battle is also in the dark, so I guess that's cooler. Okay, we're on the final level of the game, and since there are no expansion pack levels and superchargers, this is it. But we don't fight Chaos first in the level. We actually fight the Hydra Hatchling first in this level. It is the sea vehicle section boss fight, and we get a top view of the Hydra as it tries to snatch you while it's underwater. Whenever the Hydra comes above the water is when you can damage him. The game gives you these kind of signals that tell you when the Hydra is about to come up from underwater so you can dodge him pretty easily during this fight. It is a decent boss fight, but it's probably as good as it can be if you're going to do a top view section for a boss fight, which I think is kind of weird. Still. It's a decent boss fight, but I don't think it really had to be here. But now we get to the bad man himself, Chaos. The final battle, Superchargers. The battle starts off with Chaos coming down to your level and shooting some spiky cubes at you. As you keep fighting him, he adds more and more cubes every single time you face him. After that, Chaos uses a giant sword and slashes the floor of the stage that causes shockwaves in both directions and you have to jump over these shockwaves. Then Chaos uses a clone ability and it's actually really easy to find the real Chaos since he's the only one wearing the crown. Chaos brings out the sword again, but it breaks after a couple of uses, which causes him to use the darkness hands, I guess that's what we're calling them. He uses these hands to manipulate the floors on the boss fight to make you jump over the floors, and it changes up the boss fight a little bit, which I like. When he rests his hands, you can hit him to deal damage to him. Then he sends out even bigger spike cubes than before that are way harder to dodge. Finally, Chaos goes to the middle of the stage and starts shooting spikes across the entire area and slamming on the ground to create shockwaves. However, he will get tired after a while and has to lay down, which will let you finish him off. 
And that's it. Not a great chaos fight if I'm being real. It just doesn't present itself as a final boss fight, which is weird since this is the chaos fight. The final boss fight of the game. <laughs> You didn't really think this was over, did you? You can't defeat me, fools! Skylands is doomed, and the universe is mine! All shall fear and obey me! I am the darkness! Oh, I guess it's because this isn't the final boss fight. Alright, this is what we've waited for the entire series. We finally get to fight the darkness, the embodiment of all that is evil in Skylands, and it's in a vehicle. Nice. Why? I get it. The gimmick of this game is vehicles, but I mean, come on. The biggest boss fight in the entire series, and it's limited to a small tunnel with a vehicle? Whatever. Hopefully this boss battle isn't a drag. At the start of the fight, you have to go through speed rings while dodging obstacles that the darkness places down. Once you go through fire rings, you can speed boost into the darkness, knocking him out for a second and you can damage him. Then the darkness sends you out of the portal and into this interdimensional strip. You have to dodge orange crystals and shoot down some evil drones the darkness sends your way. The darkness even sends out something that resembles Chaos's head thing to defeat you. Then eventually your speed boost will hit the darkness and that's it. You repeat the interdimensional strip a couple more times and then go back to the rift and defeat him finally. Wow, what a lame boss fight, for real this time. I mean, it feels like there are no stakes, and the vehicle battle itself is just terrible. Just another reason why I consider Superchargers the worst game in the series, and overall, the game as a whole, when it comes to the bosses, is pretty mediocre. There are a couple standouts like the Storm Sequencer and Lord Stratosphere, but when more than a third of your bosses are in vehicles, there's just only so much you can do. Seriously, vehicles limit what can happen in these fights, and it's unfortunate since there are a lot of cool villains in this game, but with no expansion pack levels, we only have one more game to talk about. So let's see what Imaginators brings to the table. In the main game of Imaginators, there is at least one boss per level. They are called Doomlanders, and most of the time they are fought at the very end of the level, and Chaos makes a different one for each battle class, and the first level is where we fight the Doomlander of the Sorcerer battle class. The Sorcerer can obviously shoot magic spells at you, and can even send out a magic orb that chases your character that you have to avoid by making it run into purple rocks around the arena. He also has an attack where he pushes you away if you get too close to him. Chaos, even near the end of the fight, gives him abilities to teleport and spawn his own enemies, and that's the fight. Not a bad boss battle for the first level, and it does give you a good introduction as to what these Doomlander boss battles will be like. The next Doomlander up is the Brawler Doomlander that has the build of a Ninja Doomlander for some reason. I don't know why, it is never specified. The Brawler's main attack is punching you, I know, shocking. He also uppercuts though, but he also has a range attack where he can make an energy fist and shoot it directly at you. Throughout the fight, bug huts will spawn and you need to destroy them as well. But other than that, the boss fight doesn't have a lot of variety to it. The main reason why this boss battle can be tough is because the fighting stage is incredibly small, and the Brawler Doomlander is pretty big and can get around the map pretty fast. It is really not an amazing fight, and you get done with it pretty quickly, although I think there's still some joy to be had here, and it's not an offensively bad fight. Alright, here's something different to spice the things up. We have a Doomlander boss fight. That's not new, but this time it is in the middle of the level, not at the end of the level, so something must be going on here. Kinda like the Brawler one, this stage is very small, and this time, the boss has all ranged attacks. But while we have to dodge your bazookas, we also have to ward off evil minions that Chaos spawns too. After doing enough damage, Chaos gives the Bazooka Doomlander a new attack. She can now rain missiles from the sky in a line. In the final stage, we get dropped down to the first deck of the ship, and cannons from an enemy ship start firing at us. This is a really easy boss fight, but that is probably because it isn't the final fight of this level. Still here? I thought I told you, stupid Skylanders, you could never stop me, Chaos, from acquiring the Helm of Ultimate Wisdom! In fact, you're so stupid, you probably believe all the legends about an evil sea monster who lives in here and guards it. Ha! Such fools! That's right, we get the evil sea monster. Wow, really creative naming here, guys. We first encounter him when we are going through the sewers of Scholarville. 
Then we eventually get to a stage and we can fight him. He splashes acid water at you and you have to move to specific parts of the splash wave to avoid getting acid water on you. The sea monster can also jump on the stage and try to chomp you. At some points he gets tired and comes up to the surface and that's where you can damage him. You go deeper into the sewers and fight him two more times and he is defeated. The boss battle is pretty bad. There is no variation to the fight and it isn't difficult at all. The most difficult part is honestly trying to traverse the most difficult part is honestly trying to traverse the sewers as it can be difficult to do that sometimes because some of the platforms are very small. In the next chapter of the Doomlander we get to battle is the Doomlander of the Swashbuckler class. A plus about this fight is that it is the biggest stage we have seen since the Sorcerer Doomlander, so we actually get to move around this time, and it uses this space to its advantage. These really spiky pufferfish spawn as obstacles during the fight. The Swashbuckler boss as well has a very unique move set. The primary attack for the boss is a spinny swords attack where she spins at you with her swords. Her second attack she can make a tornado underwater. Later in the fight she can also start spawning lightning bolts during the battle. So you have to constantly move around during the fight and always be aware. So far this is the best Doomlander in the game and it's also the most dynamic fight we have and it's just a fun boss fight too. Sadly we go from having a pretty big sized fighting stage to having an incredibly small fighting stage because the Night Doomlander has one of the smaller stages in the entire game. I mean look at this. How am I supposed to work with this? The Night Doomlander obviously has a sword swing attack and he has another attack where he charges up his sword on the ground and slams it on the ground at you. Then Chaos out of nowhere brings a wrecking ball to the fight and swings it around during the stage for the rest of the Doomlander fight. You can actually trick the Knight into running into the wrecking ball's line and it will do damage for you to it. This boss fight, in my opinion, is the definition of mid. It is not insultingly bad to the point where you're just disgusted when you play it, but like, did we really need to have this boss fight in the game? Honestly, I don't think so. Be prepared though, because the next fight is Chaos's most evil Doomlander yet. Too quiet. It's making me nervous. My tummy's all rumbly. <laughs> The guacamole monster. This boss fight I really wish wasn't fought in a vehicle. For some reason, even though we are imaginaries and not superchargers, they for some reason relegate this boss fight to a glorified turret section, which I think really sucks because this could have been an amazing boss fight. We start shooting at the guacamole monster and he is defeated very quickly. But then it is revealed that he was in fact not the real guacamole monster, but merely a minion for the actual guacamole monster. The real monster's two arms appear from the island and more many guacamole creatures spawn. Once you destroy both of its arms, it reveals its head. Now a bunch of guacamole monsters and guacamole hands appear from the island and you have to dodge all those while shooting at the guacamole monster's head. But eventually, you get it done. This would have been an amazing fight for not being in a turret section, but it's still a nice break from the main game, so at least the guacamole monster can give us that. Okay, thank goodness, the next boss fight has a pretty large fighting stage, and we fight the Ninja Doomlander. He can spawn his ninja's throwing stars in different forms around the map that explode, and of course he can actually throw them at you. For some reason though, they work like boomerangs because they come back to him. He can throw them in front of him, but he can also throw them and they curve behind him. He can also teleport around the map and later in the fight he spawns duplicates. This boss fight is okay, I guess. I think it is another one of the better Doomlander boss fights so far, but honestly that isn't saying that much. So hopefully these Doomlander bosses can step it up. And apparently they can because the next boss battle is the Smash Doomlander and we fight him in the Golden Arcade. In the Golden Arcade level you play this candy gumdrop game on an arcade. 
but Chaos hacks into the game and puts Jirskander into the game as well and makes you fight the Doomlander in the game. They never explain how Chaos did this, so a wizard did it, I guess. But this gives us the ability to fight him in a 2D view, which switches up the formula, which I can always get behind. And also the graphics also change a bit. Now the Smasher is probably the most generic class, as really all they can do is smash things with their smashing weapon. But near the halfway point of the fight, the Smasher gets his rage mode unlocked, which he can now do moves way faster. And at the end of the fight, fire spell punks will spawn to make the fight a bit harder. This boss fight is pretty great actually, maybe it's just because it's so different, but I mean, that's what these Doomlander bosses have been needing, since just fighting Doomlanders after Doomlanders can get pretty repetitive. The next boss fight we get is the Bowslinger Doomlander, and hey look at that, once again we have a big battle stage. That's nice. The Bowslinger can release a bunch of bows at a time, so the stage has three pillars that you can hide behind to avoid them. But he also launches bows that will chase your Skander until you run behind one of the pillars, and the pillars destroy the bows, so it won't hit you. The Bowslinger Doomlander itself doesn't get any more powers, but Chaos makes it harder by spawning a bunch of sheep enemies that will keep spawning over and over again until the boss is defeated. This is probably the most challenging Doomlander we've faced yet, and I can appreciate that since a lot of these Doomlanders, if we're being honest, are just jokes and are very easy to get past. And the battle itself is a good one too, but with the Bowslinger Doomlander down, we have only one more Doomlander left. The one Doomlander left is the Quickshot Doomlander, which is also by far the hardest Doomlander in the game. There is a noticeable difficulty gap between the Quickshot Doomlander and the rest of them. At the beginning of the fight, he isn't actually incredibly hard since all he does is shoot at you, but once you start shooting his bullets that can ricochet off walls towards you, oh yeah, this boss fight gets into gear. So now you have to move out of the way for his regular bullets and the ones that are ricocheting all over the area. And if that isn't bad enough, he will start shooting two ricocheting bullets at you, while also now being able to freeze you by creating frozen shockwaves in the map. But this is great since so many of these Doomlander bosses were honestly just so easy. Now having a final Doomlander boss fight being actually a difficult fight is a breath of fresh air. At least the Doomlander is left on a high note, but now the rest of the bosses will be regular bosses that we have to fight in this game. What has Presto Braino and so forth. I like to call him Super Saiyan Chaos, I mean the resemblance is uncanny. During the fight, Chaos will create a bunch of Doomlanders as distractions while he goes around the map and makes shockwaves you have to jump over. The weird thing about this fight is that damaging the Doomlanders he spawns will actually do damage to Chaos. And that's really the fight, that's it. Chaos will get more shockwaves throughout the fight, he gives up to 3 shockwaves at a time, and he creates more and more Doomlanders. But for the most part, you're fighting Doomlanders and not fighting Chaos himself, which is a huge letdown, especially since this is the last Chaos fight ever. But that was it. That is probably the easiest Chaos fight of all time. So now all we have left is the three boss fights you find in expansion packs of Imaginator. The first one is Fate Crash, found in the Crash Bandicoot theme level. Yeah, this boss fight sucks. Fate Crash gets a giant mech and he spins around at you. Fate Crash also makes certain parts of the dance floor deadly, so you have to move around a bit. He shoots these weird orange bullets at you, which I have no idea what they are, and that's it. This fight is pretty boring and it drags on for a little longer than it should. The boss fight may be actually better if you fight him as Crash or Cortex, since they fit in with the level theme, but it still wouldn't be a good boss fight. Alright, the Enchanted Elven Forest. We fight the Angry Mutant Tree, yet another example of creative enemy naming in Imaginator. The tree has four spiky roots that it will use one at a time. You have to destroy all four roots, then a water bucket will appear that we use to finish the tree off. This boss battle is nothing special and is over extremely quickly, but the Angry Mutant Tree looks funny, so he has that going for him. But with the Angry Mutant Tree defeated, we have only one more boss to talk about, and he's found in the final chapter of Skinders Ever. Lost Imaginite Mines. And it is the Rubble Maker. This dude looks kind of familiar, doesn't he? He slams his fist on the ground and then makes shockwaves that you have to jump over. He eventually gets tired and his shields will go down. You can also damage him while his shields are down. He also uses these giant magnetic boulders that you have to change from push or pull 
to get the magnet to go towards him in the game and this will also make his shields go down. He has this weird attack where he gets up a bit and then starts shooting crystals from the sky and you have to move around to avoid them. After fighting him for a while he starts regenerating health crazy fast but then Blobbers comes out of nowhere and hits him in his head which knocks him out and then it only takes two hits to defeat him. This boss fight is actually pretty good. I'm not just saying that because it's the last boss fight ever. I think it's actually a pretty entertaining boss fight. Now, does it feel like it's the last boss fight in a series of games? No, it doesn't really do that, but to be fair, it is an expansion pack level, so it probably wasn't trying to do that. It is a good boss fight though. The Rubble Maker looks cool, and it manages to stay interesting throughout the entire boss fight, and it even has that kind of a twist ending where Blobbers comes and actually saves us for once. And with that, every boss has now been fought in Skylanders. If you were counting it up, there were 9 bosses in Spiral's Adventure, 3 bosses in Giants, 11 bosses in Swap Force, 34 bosses in Trap Team, and both Superchargers and Imaginators ended up having 15 bosses in both their games, which means we talked about 87 different bosses throughout the entire series. You know, there were a couple boss fights that weren't that good, you could say. There was even some that were terrible. I think, though, that consistently, Skylanders had some pretty good boss fights. You know, there was the Drillax boss fight in giants you know we even have this stone golem and ssa which i thought was still pretty good so i still think that skanders to this day has some pretty good bosses that are very fun to play every now and again when i first was thinking about making this video i thought it'd be a little 15 to 20 minute video but then i just remembered how many boss fights were in skanders in this series i don't know this video might come close to crossing the one hour threshold we're gonna have to see Technically speaking, this is the first video of SGTV Season 3, so I hope you guys enjoyed the premiere of Season 3, and hopefully there'll be many more videos to come. Sorry this video took so long to get out, guys. A lot of stuff is going on, and this video also just being long itself, it took a little while to make. But thank you all for watching this video, and have a great day.